In another eon, several species of ancient humans lived in southwestern Ethiopia's omo Kibish formation. Our distant ancestors had numerous reasons to settle in what was then a fertile volcanic rift valley. Rainfall collected in lakes and provided easy access to food and clean water. Volcanic rocks provided raw materials for sharp stone tools for these early modern humans. The lower Omo River Basin's habitat was similar to what it is today 200,000 years ago, albeit more moist and less arid away from the river. The vegetation was dense, and a steady supply of water resulted in a mixture of grassland and woodland vegetation. Omo Kibish is the name of an archaeological site on the Omo River where the oldest examples of our own hominin species were found. Omo is one of several sites located within the ancient rock formation known as Kibish, which lies along the lower Omo River at the base of the Nkalabong Range in southern Ethiopia. Archaeologists regard the Omo Kibish formation as a hotbed for hominin fossils. The Omo remains are a collection of hominin skeletons discovered in Omo National Park. The Omo hominins may have died in an explosive volcanic eruption 230,000 years ago, but their echoes can still be heard across time, waiting to be discovered by those who delve into ancient history. In the 1960s, paleoanthropologists discovered the remains of an anatomically modern Homo sapiens, known as Omo I. The bones indicate that Omo I was a young adult at the time of her death, and she is now classified as an anatomically modern human. Omo Kibish I, or simply Omo I, is a partial human skeleton discovered at the site. A skull, several upper limb and shoulder bone fragments, several right hand bones, the lower end of the right leg, a piece of the left pelvis, fragments of both lower legs and the right foot, and some rib and vertebrae fragments were discovered. Remember that every discovery is a step closer to understanding our past, and this story demonstrates how a single discovery can shake our understanding of human evolution. Interestingly, the dating and location of this fossil also coincides with the so-called mitochondrial Eve hypothesis, so theoretically this fossil could even be the mythological mother of all of us. But the sex of Omo Y has been the subject of unresolved debate. A male sex attribution has been considered likely in the past primarily because of the robusticity and the inferred large body size and stature of the Omo I individual. In one report, Stringer and McKee referred to Omo Hurst as a modern human male, the man from Kibish, because the fossil displayed a higher and rounder skull and a bigger chin than any Neanderthal, and his skeleton suggests his was a taller and lighter frame than we find in archetypal cave people, though he still had a powerful physique compared with an average modern male, with a noticeable brow ridge over his eyes and a rather broad and receding forehead. Nevertheless, few of these characteristics are decidedly male rather than simply reflecting a high level of skeletal robusticity, according to a new report. Indeed, the post-cranial remains of Omo Wast were originally described as strongly built and displaying well-developed muscular impressions. However, a new study identified the Omo I femur as bearing more resemblance to a sample of modern human females based on several morphological characteristics. Recent analysis suggests that the morphology of the Omo I pelvis is consistent with a female sex attribution. Some previous workers have found a female sex attribution reasonable based on preliminary work on the pelvis. Yet others still favour the view that Omo I was male or that the sex of Omo I could not be determined. Her body mass was estimated using the estimated femoral head diameter. The hominin's body mass has been estimated at around 70 to 75 kilos, about 150 pounds. According to most estimates, the hominin stood between 162 to 182 centimetres, about 64 to 72 inches, based on the proximal humerus, or quite a bit shorter, based on the length of the first metatarsal. Yet estimates based on femoral head diameter and clavicle length diameter in modern humans estimates the Omo I stature to be up to six feet tall. The leg bones are not sufficiently intact to provide a more precise height estimate. These measurements bring to mind a tall and lithe ancient woman in the mind of many paleoanthropologists. According to most investigators, what makes Omo one a homo sapiens specimen 
is the presence of a prominent chin and tall cranial vault. It has long been recognized as the oldest fossil of our species found in eastern Africa so far. Omo, one being morphologically recognized as a member of our species, tells us that before 230,000 years ago, Homo sapiens was already present in this part of the world. In fact, Omo one represents the oldest occurrence of our species in the fossil record. Previous attempts to date the Omo one fossils suggested they were 195,000 years old, but recent research indicates they must be older than a major explosive eruption of the Shala volcano in the main Ethiopian rift that occurred 230,000 years ago. This age would not reveal Omo one's exact age. However, it would give researchers a reliable estimate of the fossil's minimum age because the bones could never be younger than the ground layer above them. Nevertheless, not all anthropologists accept this date of 233,000 years and still prefer the 195,000 year age. In 1982, the British Museum reconstructed the Omo One skull. The report accompanying the reconstruction is titled A Reconsideration of the Omo Kibish Remains and the Erectus Sapiens Transition. According to the report by Chris Stinger and Michael Day, Omo One has a posterior vault that can be reconstructed with some confidence, giving it a decidedly modern appearance. Using early anatomically modern specimens and more archaic specimens from Africa, it is possible to reconstruct a modern face that still reflects the robust morphology of other late middle to early upper Pleistocene hominids, the report stated. Furthermore, the paper stated that the reconstruction of the Omo One cranium was made using the available fragments directly where possible or indirectly as indicators of the likely morphology of missing parts. We did not use fragments from other fossil hominids in our reconstruction, but rather tried to produce a reasonable reconstruction based on the available fragments and the morphology of other late middle and upper Pleistocene crania. Thus, this reconstruction used likely morphology to fill in the missing pieces of the skull and was completed more than 40 years ago without the use of computer imaging or any modern technologies. As you can see from the reconstruction, the skull is very incomplete and only a few large fragments, with only small pieces of the original chin and brow. However, the newly estimated age of Omo I calls previous assumptions about the skull into question. Between Omo I and Omo II, Omo II is frequently described as having more primitive features. As stated, unlike other middle Pleistocene fossils, Omo I possesses unequivocal modern human characteristics, such as a tall and globular cranial vault and a prominent chin. Despite these minor reservations, the study concludes by stating that new age constraints are congruent with most models for the evolution of modern humans, that is, models that estimate Homo sapiens to have originated and diverged from other archaic humans anywhere between 350,000 and 200,000 years ago. But should the Omo Kibish hominids be considered modern humans? This is dependent on one's definition of modern humans. Many paleoanthropologists do not believe in a sharp distinction between modern and archaic humans. For these scientists, the Omo Kibish specimens may simply be regarded as representatives of their time and place, part of an evolutionary chain that led to modern humans. The findings, while convincing, will not end the debate over human evolution. Indeed, the Omo I reconstruction appears to be more modern than the younger Herto specimen, as well as the Skul and Katza early Homo sapiens hominins from the Levant. This is a major issue for those who support the Out of Africa theory, and it concerns some investigators who question the accuracy of the Omo I reconstruction. According to anthropologist John Hawkes, Several investigators have raised the question of whether this sample contains multiple species, one even suggesting that the species, immediately ancestral to our own, may be preserved alongside the modern humans in the personage of Omo I. In fact, a lateral comparison of three early Homo sapien skulls from Ethiopian reveals that the differences are not significant. For example, the younger Herto skull and Omo II have very similar profiles, with Herto being slightly higher on the forehead. Omo I differs from these in that it has a rounded occipal, 
but all three specimens have similar frontal profiles and lateral torus thicknesses. Omo 1 and 2 have significant differences in the position of their greatest cranial breadth and the shape of their cranial walls. Hair toe falls somewhere in the middle. But these are not recent skulls, they are ancient. They are certainly not the same as any living sample. They differ significantly from Neanderthals and earlier Africans, according to a paper. All three skulls are robust, with Omo 1 being the least robust of the three. Presumably, all three specimens are males. Their diversity is wide, but not surprising for three crania in a single region of the world. According to new research, the Herto skull differs from all recent humans in several cranial measurements. This is undoubtedly true for Omo 2, though possibly not for Omo 1, which is more fragmented. In one study, Omo 1 was shown to closely resemble the last common ancestor before we split from that lineage. Also, Omo 2 has his very morphological close to the Solo River skulls of Java, which are usually attributed to late Homo erectus. Lastly, the Omo and Herto early modern humans are not the only African skulls to have classification issues. The Jebel Irhud skull from Morocco, dated to 330,000 years ago, has been dubbed the earliest Homo sapiens, but many researchers, including Stringer and Hawkes, are sceptical that the Jebel Irhud specimen was truly Homo sapiens. Indeed, skull measurements reveal that the skull is most similar to Neanderthals overall, though the face is more like Homo sapiens. Nevertheless, we can only date humanity using the fossils that we have. The study of human evolution is always in motion, with boundaries and timelines shifting as our understanding grows. These fossils demonstrate how resilient ancient humans were, because they survived, thrived, and migrated in Ethiopia, an area prone to natural disasters. How did Homo sapiens become the dominant human species on the planet, wiping out or absorbing all other human species in their path? As evolutionary biologist Nicholas Longrich wrote, an aggressive military strategy is also an effective evolutionary strategy. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to contemplate the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and check out our channel's other highly compelling videos.